Hi, my name is Michael Niff and my very good book friend Leslie over at the Nerdy Narrative. Go check out her channel, subscribe if you haven't. She has been on some crazy fantasy kicks and horror kicks lately. You should check out her channel. She is a great member of this community. She also sent me my very first like book mail as a booktuber and that was extremely exciting. She sent me a series that she has been obsessing over lately and I've seen a little bit of a resurgence of lately because this series has been out for a long time but prior to this I'd never seen anyone talk about it on booktube really. That is The Faithful and the Fallen by John Gwynn. I have read the first book Malice in this series and it's a weird one for me to think about because on some level so like first of all let me get out i greatly enjoyed the book but on some levels i also may have a hard time recommending it to some people let me try to explain the faithful and the fallen is very much inspired by like every single thing that's come before it. I'm talking fantasy video games, fantasy adaptations, fantasy books previously. And personally, at least in the first book, Malice, I feel like there is very, very little that John Gwynn does in this book that is just wholesale unique. As I went through the story, every single element of this story felt familiar. And that's not inherently bad. Like there was something a little bit comfort food about it because it was an interesting mix of these familiar elements. Like there are so many things that I've seen before, so many tropes, so many story beats that I've seen before, but they were mixed in a extremely fun and enjoyable way. But I still have seen them before. So if you're someone that's been reading fantasy for a very long time and doesn't like anything that follows along like super familiar lines, you may have a hard time with this one because like I said, every single bit of it felt like it was from something I've already seen, but mixed up in a, in a fun way, at least for me. But I also am the type of person that doesn't mind the farm boy chosen one trope or rescuing an animal that becomes like your rescuer later on. Like there's just, uh, I don't even want to get into all of it. So many things in here, like almost entirely, the book felt familiar because it used extremely, extremely well-worn tropes for its territory. I personally, I was super on board with it because I thought that it was unique in the way that it mixed them together. I also thought it was unique in the way that it kind of told the story. But once again, I want to mention that this is something I had a hard time getting into at first. Leslie, thank you again, Leslie, sent me the ebook for this book. Because I knew that it was a longer book, I decided to go ahead and pick up the audiobook version as well so that I could do the thing that I like to do when possible, which is try to read them both at the same time. I made the mistake that I sometimes do and I never tell people to do, I always warn against it, which was I tried to start the book in audiobook form. And I got about three or four chapters in and I had an extremely, I don't know if it was the book, I don't know if it was me and the headspace that I was in, I just had an extremely hard time actually under, like, keeping things straight, understanding what was going on because this book, I think, uh, over the course, uh, it's introduced slowly-ish, but there's like seven different POV characters and there was a lot of jumping around in time and in place. Like you'll see one character in this section and you'll see another character and they'll see the same events. And then you'll see a third character and they're all the way across the world. Then you'll go back to the first character two months later. There's, there's stuff like this. And I just, I don't know if it was my brain being used to reading something like Twilight, which is a lot easier to follow, of course, or what, but I had a really hard time. I had to read the first, I don't know, the first segment of this book, probably the first 15 to 20%, that's a lot. I had to reread those sections two or three times each at points. Maybe I just wasn't in the mental headspace, but I really did have a hard time kind of latching on to everything. But the thing that I want to get to is once I was latched on and once I kind of understood what we were doing, I was all the way in. I got super invested in the story. I got super in love with the characters. And there's a lot of named characters in this book. I know that I love the Stormlight Archive and people talk about that having a lot of information. I know that people talk about the Wheel of Time being like insane with the number of characters and ways they tie into each other. I've only read the first three Wheel of Time books. I didn't find it that hard. I have read the uh, Stormlight Archive books and I found it like, yes, it's significant, but I was so invested, I didn't have a hard time. In Malice, 
I had an extremely hard time. There are so many named characters in this book. I I did. I had a hard time keeping it straight. And that's normally something that I talk about loving. It's normally something I talk about not having a problem with. I did here. But what, like I said, once I was established, I was all the way in and I was super invested. From about the 30%, maybe 40% mark through the rest of the book, I was just all the way in. As things happened, I was extremely invested. Some things were predictable. Some things were less predictable predictable, but no matter what, it hit me really good. The ending, the climatic ending of this book has just so many things happening. I don't want to give any major spoilers here, but let's just say things go bad for a lot, and I do mean a lot of people, named characters. And for me, this was a solid four-star book. It took a lot of effort for me to get into, and it, it took some time for me to get into. There were also the caveats of the familiarity of it, which like, if you want to hear my thoughts on like predictable plots or familiarity, I want you to, I'll link that video somewhere up here. But once I was in, I was in all the way and I really, really loved it. In fact, I probably would have given it a higher than a four star rating if I didn't have these difficulties. So moving into the next books, it's entirely possible that those are five star books for me. I know I was hesitant at first, but I am extremely excited to get to the second book in this series sooner than later. I just have a lot on my plate, but I want to get there because holy crap, I, I, ask Leslie. I was like texting her the entire second half of this book, just like, okay, what, what about this? This is insane. What about this character? What is this character going to do? I I was incredibly invested. I loved it. When the ending hit, I, I was ready to jump into book two right away. I do recommend this series if you are like me and you're willing to put in some effort and you're willing to put up with those potentially overused elements. Like I said, I thought they were remixed in a way that was interesting, but I definitely know there's a lot of people out there who are tired of that stuff. And if that's the case, this may not be for you. Additionally, at least at this point in the story, uh, it is extremely uh, low on the magic level use and maybe that will change later there is definitely magic there is definitely supernatural elements in the story in its fantasy world it's still high fantasy obviously not low fantasy but at this point the magic system is quite soft if you're looking for an epic fantasy that's doing entirely original things and has a extremely hard magic system super detailed rule-based magic system this may not be for you if you're looking for something that may be a sort of comfort food a little bit of familiar chicken soup for the soul remix of some beloved European style fantasy tropes, some really fun character work, and a lot of political dealings and jumping back and forth between a lot of different point of view characters, you might love this book as much as I did. I hope that makes sense and is useful to you guys. If you like this review and you wanna see more videos from me, please remember to hit that subscribe button. You can hit that bell and you'll get notifications for when I post new videos. You could also click that little thumbs up button to let me know that you like the video. Also let YouTube's algorithm know that you like the video. And comment down below if you've read this series or comment down below if you've seen other people talk about this series. I know Mike from Mike's book reviews recently talked about it, but short of my like direct book to bubble, I haven't seen a lot of love for this series. My first introduction to the series was from a channel called Plants and Paperbacks. Uh, Brittany ran that channel. She's taking a break. I don't know if she's coming back soon, but she's the one that mentioned that, which got Leslie to buy it. And then Leslie loved it, talked about it all the time, which got me to read it. Thanks again, Leslie. I think Angela from the Literature Science Alliance is also going to be reading that soon. So uh, there's been a little bit of a resurgence of it, but I really haven't seen many people talk about this book. I'm curious to see Angela's thoughts. If any of the rest of you have read this book, please let me know your thoughts down below. I'm looking forward to continuing it soon. I hope that you guys are having a good week. I hope this video was informative and or entertaining in some way. Until next time, I'm not your dad, but I am your best friend. Sleep, no I never get enough. Always waking up tired to sleep. No, I never get enough. If I don't show up, I might get fired. Sleep. No, I never get enough. Always waking up tired to sleep. No, I never get enough. If I don't show up, I might get fired.